Hello, hello. I am back. And I am on antibiotics for tooth inflammation. And I'm on heavy pain medicine. And now I'm all blissed out, even though I still have pain. But it is not as severe, no, the pain medication is kicking in and I don't take it like all the time, you know, I wait a little bit and see if it subsides by itself and when the pain starts to rise up again and I can tell that it's going to get bad then I will take another one but hopefully it's gonna taper out now tomorrow or so on. I've been on pain medicine now for several days and antibiotics and then I notice something I noticed that the antibiotics didn't even do anything. So for like four days I was on antibiotics, did nothing. The swelling got much, w my whole cheek was swollen this big. And that's why I didn't make a video, because I didn't want to look too monstrous. But it's still swollen, this part here. It's right there, the root and it hurts and I can only eat soft food like mashed potatoes I can't even chew, I can't even open my mouth very far like this, I can't open it further than that it hurts real real bad when I open my mouth so I can't even laugh very much either just, just smiling like ooh it presses against this thickness, this pus, whatever is built has built up in there, and and that presses in turn against the nerves. So it feels like the nerves in my in my bones are completely upset and screaming, sending signals. So hopefully, pain medicine is going to take care of this now for the next six hours or so, or seven hours. That would be really good. Yeah, uh, was hoping that I could take care of this 100% holistically. And when I realized that I couldn't, that was a couple of days ago, when I made the last video, I was already getting sick and I was really angry to say the least that I had to resort to farmer medicine and but I have to say I'm very grateful that farmer medicine provides very strong pain medicine and that's basically the only thing I would use when it comes to farmer medicine is pain medicine you know no matter what someone has, you know, no matter how serious the illness is, I would, that's just my personal view on it, I would just use pain medicine. And my, my friend Berger, she had cancer and she did all that treatment, chemotherapy and radiation, and it was so incredibly painful, so incredibly horrible what she has gone through. She described it to me, how that felt. How horrible, incredibly horrible that felt. She said after the radiation treatments, for like weeks she could not sit, stand or lie down. She couldn't sleep. The discomfort was so horrible because of that radiation. She said that there was a terrible mistake to do that but she didn't trust in her body enough to believe in natural healing sources. So that is the thing, you know, when we get 
violently sick with something, the first thing we do is we go to the doctor and then the doctor doesn't know anything about plants. He only knows about farmer industry. That's how much the farmer industry has a grip on everything, even on politics, of course. And then we'll, we get saturated with toxic materials to kill uh, whatever. Let me use a, a drastic example to kill road rage with a nuclear bomb, something like this. So, yeah. That's basically what it is, you know. We kill an infection with unbelievable toxins. And I can feel it in my body. I feel how how it 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 makes me it slows everything down, the antibiotics. Slows my entire body down and norm normally I'm like I talk faster and I am. more agitated and all of this and the antibiotics really put a complete like it presses it way down oh, I don't even know if I should make this video but what I want to say is that I should not have started the antibiotics because they aren't even working but I can't stop now something can become resistant to it and can become even worse later on. So you can't just stop antibiotics in the middle of the treatment. But after four days it just kept getting worse. Normally it would get better after one day. So I can tell the antibiotics are probably most likely not what is healing my root inflammation. So I have some really dangerous bacterial strand in there and it is possible that I got it at the dentist because I've been to the dentist and it was first of all extremely painful the way the, dr the drilling was like 10 times worse than normal and right there I knew something wasn't quite right it was already there that the, the beginning of it and then after that treatment, it just, it was so bad for like over a week with pain medicine. And then for two months, it was dormant and then it came back just about five days ago. And with the vengeance and this time like really, really, really bad. So now I know I have to have that tooth removed. And you can't have it removed while it's fully in inflamed with pus and, and I can't even open my mouth all the way. So I have to get rid of this. But the antibiotics, amoxicillin, is probably now the it's not working anymore because a lot of those superbugs, as they call them, are resistant today to it. And that has to do mainly with the fact that physicians have been recklessly prescribing amoxicillin and and other from factory farms. yeah and factory farm in factory farms too they they more they farms. yeah yeah they use eighty percent antibiotics for for the cattle eighty percent of all antibiotics are used in factory farms. Then a lot of people, they eat that meat, you know, that has all that stuff in it. And then because of that, we're breeding in our own bodies, we're breeding superbugs. People are breeding superbugs in their bodies because they're eating meat. And that the animals are creating the superbugs. The patients create the superbug because of reckless prescription of antibiotics. I have a friend, she goes to the doctor, to the emergency, 
every time she has the flu. And flu is a virus, but the doctor prescribes antibiotics, which is only kills bacteria. And it doesn't even do anything for her flu. She just thinks it does. And then it, it still takes three weeks for the flu to finally go away, just, just because the body had to get its own antibodies. And, and that against, even against the flow of, against the, the, the incredible toxicity of the antibiotics and all the stress and, and all of that. So against all odds, basically, she finally develops an antibody and then it, it heals itself. So if she doesn't, didn't take the antibiotics, it would heal faster, actually. But nobody seems to put their mind into it at all, neither the patients nor the doctors. And people always think doctors, they know so much. Yeah. No, they don't. They are, they are very, their education is, is very lopsided and very limited. And they are just as regular folks who watch soap operas as everyone else. And same as everyone else that they don't watch PBS some people they are not even allowed to watch PBS it goes to that extreme because of religion and I want to talk about this as well in this video because all of this ties in with one another and, and then this incredible grand falloonism so I like that word, you know. Grand falloonism is when people do something that that is totally adverse, but they do it because their peer group does it. So like not watching educational films because of peer pressure is called grand falloonism. It's because of their bodies, they go to the same church or whatever, same denomination, and that denomination says, thou shall not watch educational films because uh, that's Satan or something. And then they are stupid like, I don't want to use the F word, and then they are making like totally adverse decisions in their lives. and the doctors too and then we are creating in the course of all of this dumbness we're creating superbugs and these superbugs are now killing thousands millions of people around the globe Barack Obama recently addressed this but he's only doing catering more now to the farmer industry with all of this. This is a, this is a perfect excuse now yeah, to yeah, take yeah. our yeah, tax, tax money. Tax money to develop more yeah, take our tax money and give it and pour it into Eli Lilly. And so they can develop uh, more antibiotics. Yeah, so they can make more antibiotics. That What's the difference between make because more they and develop different ones? Ones that will fight the superbugs. Well, I, I don't. Ones. To me, making and developing is about but the same making, thing. They could be making the same ones. They just to develop new ones. Making new ones, yeah. Making, creating new patents. You new know, patents. making yeah. new uh, new types, and so that they can make more money with this. So now comes a no-brainer for you. Garlic, also called the Russian penicillin, because the people in Russia are, are smarter and a whole lot healthier. And the reason why is because they eat holistic whole foods that come from rich earth, that are not treated with pesticides 
and in a lot of regions, not pr probably not in the big, bigger city parts, but rural, where they are still living the traditional farming lifestyles, where they treat the plants with love and natural holistic treatments where the plants still have worms in the soil and where everything is nutritious and where they grow very old over a hundred years 120 and so on yeah and they take they grow their own garlic and it is potent baby potent and garlic is the most potent antibiotic a wide spectrum antibiotic that takes care of everything not just of it doesn't only take care of bacteria it takes care of viruses fungus molds the C word is C word is a mold too it takes care of all yeah? so any it takes care of any kind of pathogen including parasites so that's what garlic does, you know. So like way, way superior to any of these patented toxins that are developed in some laboratories, testing that on animals, suffering, cruel, misery, you know. That's what people do. That's what humans do when they are seeing dollar signs and not having a speck of empathy. Right? And people who are not allowed to watch educational films, so they're all serving that corporate bandwagon and the extreme suffering. And not only that, they are causing their own extreme suffering. I've seen the people, I've seen Republicans causing their own suffering. So and even dying because of that. Yeah. And being in misery and aging and <sighs> smelling bad and I mean decaying because they can't watch educational films. See I watch educational films I get before the internet I was watching PBS now I watch it on the internet and that's what Paul and I were always watched, you know, f forever, for the last 17, 18 years. PBS, you know, back then on TV. Everything else sucked, and PBS was the only thing that, that had something interesting to, to throw. Yeah, National Geographic has some good things History too. Channel. History Channel. But yeah, you know, they have some, they have some propaganda in that already too. PBS has now been also been bought by by a corporatist, so I heard it's gotten a, a lot worse. I haven't watched it lately, but it's gotten worse. So they had people uh, doing propaganda for meat and stuff like this, and this is that's a real crime. So, but at least they still have some educational films in it. So I now I watch. I usually watch uh, BBC documentaries now they're they're much more on on target of reality they are not corrupted yet hopefully that stays like this so yeah I watch educational films that are reliable and also documentaries from Germany and because I speak German, so I, I can watch those as well. And then I compare all of them, and, and so I get a bit much wider picture because of this. I am, I am stepping away from, from within the corporate influenced world. And I can see it from, from farther away, and I can I can see how the things tie in with one another and I highly recommend to for other people to try it their very best to do the same. BBC documentaries are more reliable. And so but ba way back then on TV I saw a film about metastases and 
it said that, for example, metastases, the uh, cancer spreading in the body is not cured by the the cancer treatments that they have. You know. So radiation and chemotherapy and all this doesn't help, and not even biopsies, because what happens is when they even touch with the when they probe into the main tumor, take a biopsy, or when they remove it, what happens is the main tumor, it's, all, it's almost an intelligent organism. It sends out signals. It sends out pheromone signals, small chemicals, into the body, which when received by the dormant cancer cells that's, that are somewhere else, tells the dormant cancer cells to start growing into new tumors. And so that's why people have metastases after surgery. So what they're doing with the surgery is <coughs> they are making it from bad to extreme. That's all they do. So when Samantha, our former dog, had was diagnosed with cancer, we did nothing. And she lived for another three years and she had a good life, we gave her holistic treatment and, sh and she was happy and it was much better. So, oh baby, baby, <laughs> baby, why do you have to do this? Oh baby, my baby is bored again, okay. So, yeah, so I was <coughs> extremely glad I saw that film. But my friend Birgit didn't listen to it because she was too afraid, she didn't trust in healing it naturally so yeah it's very sad I struggled with her I couldn't convince her yeah. I miss her very much but I know for clearly for myself is that whatever I would ever have you know it, it, it doesn't matter I will do it holistically you know I want to enjoy every moment of my life and not be suffering and from chemicals and all of this. So, so the best is to grow your own garlic, which I'm planning on doing. And make your own penicillin, you know, make your own antibiotics, the wide spectrum antibiotics that are not just antibiotics, but anti-mycotics and anti-parasitic and anti-carcinogenic, all of this combined, antiviral, all of it combined. And so I want to, well, I want to do this, but for now I am taking about three to four teaspoons, f full teaspoons, in a glass of water with water mixed in, drink that three to four times a day. You can do it more often than that. So I think I'm going to do it five times a day today. And I noticed a drastic reduction in the swelling and in the pain. And it felt so much better. It just, I could feel it. I could feel how the garlic was just sizzling away that those terrible bacteria that are in there. I don't know what they are. I don't have a clue what they're called. And I don't even need to know. Uh, it's probably some kind of really serious, like a streptococcus, some real horrible thing, but like a super streptococcus or something that is looks monstrous <laughs> under the electro microscope. So, no, I don't need to know. Uh, all I need to know is that garlic is going to take care of it. Okay. And so, yeah, after about four days, I started to, I was like, ah, yeah, I remember I have garlic on the table. Let's do it now. Let's not just a little bit sprinkled on my mashed potatoes. No, I'm going to pour it in my cup. I'm going to pour water in. I mix it with a spoon and I drink that down. Yeah. And if you can't drink it down in, in, 
in one X gulp, then you drink it down in three increments and you keep pouring water in and stirring it and then drinking it. And it will burn a little bit, but that's okay. If you eat something with it, then it will be okay in the stomach. It will actually feel good in the stomach. And it will take care of, of any other things that are going on in the body currently, you know, what, whatever they may, there may be, an in, in ingested egg or something from, from a bug, it will take care of it, it will, it will kill it and will, it will get it out. So, because there's all, there are always parasites, people think that we have eradicated parasites. No, <laughs> Dr. Scholz has some horror stories to tell and I, recommend you check that out on his website herbdoc.com and right now he has uh, some specials I'm going to take advantage of this today he has 20% off and free shipping and his products are and I'm not paid by him <laughs> I just believe in him he's an amazing amazing person an amazing company and he has they have healed thousands and thousands, maybe a million, maybe several million people now from real serious life-threatening illnesses, including the C word. I'm just reporting it back, what it is. I'm just reporting the facts. Okay? And so people cured themselves. Birgit, my friend Birgit, she, had, she bought his incurable package for one month. She did it. She had to take less medication. Um, it, her body started to heal. It was tr tremendous results. But she didn't have money and she had a tight wad husband. And he said, no, nope, I'm not going to buy any more. Too expensive. Okay, so that mean, meant that Birgit was going to die. Yeah. So he didn't see bu buying another one. No, no. But I told her that she could do it on her own even without the cure packages. So, but she didn't believe it. So Dr. Schwartz was giving all of the ingredients, uh, all of his, his patent, which is, can't be patented, of course, you know, his na nature patent. He's giving this to everybody for free, you know. Take this nature patent. Uh, Take these, take this recipe, make your own, you know. make your, just don't sell it because it, it, it's certainly, people are not authorized to sell this kind of stuff unless you have all the licenses for it. But you can create your own concoctions, you know, you, you can make your own blends, you can blend garlic with oranges and water and you can make fantastic super power antibiotic drinks with it you can mix it with whatever tastes good together with garlic you know I mean, it could be fruity it could probably better to have make it mix it with celery and blend that and drink that or whatever you like you know and whatever is good whatever is raw and natural and it will heal the body. So I am practicing my freedom of speech and yeah, we are we have been infiltrated by the medical industry to the point where people were weren't even allowed to say anymore that natural remedies work. But I'm practicing my freedom of speech and yeah, just a little disclaimer here for my own personal protection. I'm not a medical doctor and this is not medical advice. I'm just saying it works for me. Okay, that's all I'm saying. So what you do with it is your business. And I um, have to by law tell people to go to the doctor. Okay. Even if I don't believe that. This is how much they have infiltrated us. But yeah, I'm telling you what, 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 how it helped other people, and telling you how it help it's helping me. I see really clearly now. Amoxicillin is not even working anymore for for the superbugs. They are they are resistant to it now. 
Um, I don't want to try out a whole panel of patented farmer antibiotics. I am taking my garlic powder, just the garlic powder itself, you know, which is not near as potent as the raw garlic. It's the, the garlic fresh picked from your from your planter pot. So, but I'm taking the garlic powder. I'm gonna today. I'm gonna order organic garlic powder. I'm gonna get it in bulk. I'm gonna store it in the pantry, in a Tupper container, and that will last me for a year or two before I have to buy a new one. And I also like to use it for making pasta sauce. Tastes delicious, and for salad dressings and different things so it's, f it's a very wonderful spice in general but when you're sick you know like teaspoons and teaspoons of it like like I said four four or five maybe teaspoons in the, in the water stew in the water go up that down it takes care of it it definitely does it did it for me so I'm, I feel it so as soon as I started with the garlic it started to get better and it was not the antibiotics I can I can tell for sure so but I'm not gonna quit the antibiotics just to be just in case because you're not supposed to quit them while you're in the middle of the of the treatment because then it, it can cause a resistance later on and you don't want that so yeah I'm, I'm just regret that I even started the and the antibiotics so, because it make it slows down the entire body and makes you feel real, real tired, and makes you exhausted easily and all of this. But um, and that's hard on the liver too. So why the garlic doesn't do any of this? Just the garlic energizes you and it and speeds up your metabolism and it speeds up your own detoxing in the body and healing all the way around like it's a complete holistic healing work that it does it's just fantastic you know it's just i love that plant what an amazing plant and that's a present from from mother earth and if people weren't so incredibly brainwashed they can they could they could take advantage of that and use it and heal themselves you know that would be so good it was would also heal bad thoughts you know. bad thoughts are often created by and depression too clinical depression is often created by by toxins lodged in the brain that are even not even flushed out so garlic cayenne pepper also black pepper those are my three real great great medications they flush this stuff out. They they detox. They're, it's just awesome. And so I w that's what I wanted to talk about in the beginning. And uh, so I think that it's already 35 minutes. I will th the other stuff I will I will talk about tomorrow because it ties in with one another. All of this, but I'm gonna leave it at this now. So take care of yourself, live holistically, that's just my recommendation, you know. And I'm not a doctor, I can't give people advice, but this is this is what I do and it I know it works for me. It probably works for everyone. I know it works for everyone, but I'm not allowed to say it. So this this is this really sucks. So what we need is we need to get our rights for to freedom of speech back. Help us do it, okay? Take care, peace out, peace out, take care of yourselves.